They walk through the forest once a week on a routine mission that's with their peculiar luggage. The bags are filled with mouse traps and mice to be returned to their natural habitat. The forest is one of the highly contaminated areas within the 30 kilometer Chernobyl exclusion zone and a home for these mammals. The reason for the mice being captured and set free again is to determine exactly how these little rodents were able to survive in such a radioactive region. Before release, each little animal spends some time in the laboratory where it is registered, assigned an individual number, body weight taken and radiation count measured. Professor Ronald Chesser, an environmentalist from Texas Technical University, started his Chernobyl research because of its unique opportunity. The bank voles here, uh, it's a, a genus called Clethrionomies. Every scientist in Europe that had studied biology knows something about Clethrionomies. It's a very common species. And we found that uh, the Clethrionomies here in the zone were so radioactive that we couldn't transport them back to the United States. They, were too, they were, would be classified as a radioactive source. However, the highly radioactive environment of the exclusion zone did not affect the lifestyle of these mice. They seem to be carrying on natural, uh, uh, very uh, uh, everyday types of activities, reproduction, growth, and, and uh, their normal lifespan in areas such as the Red Forest with very, very high amounts of radiation. Every living body has a certain level of mutations during its lifetime which is called baseline mutation rates. It varies for different genes, and there is a known baseline mutation rate for this particular strain of mouse. The researchers were able to determine if the mice had a decrease or increase in this baseline mutation. Professor Brenda Rogers has been following mice in the zone for over two years, collecting and releasing them on a regular basis. What you might expect that we would find was that those individuals that were exposed to radiation had a higher mutation level. But it actually what we ended up <laughs> finding, what our results showed, was that the individuals that were exposed to the radiation in the exclusion zone actually had a lower level of mutations than those that had not been exposed. DNA is a living cell and a basic building block of any living body, mice included. In terms of ionizing radiation, the ultimate risk of exposure is cancer induction. In case of these mice, their cells did not undergo irreversible mutations, even under conditions of severe radiation. We are looking now more closely at the finer level of the expression of the genes to see what's going on. We think that Due to the exposure, there may be some increased um, ability to repair damage in the cells. And so that's why we're not seeing higher mutation rates in the exposed animals. Mice have served well in many clinical studies and trials. The current experiments are encouraging, but it has yet to be seen whether the results can be applicable to humans. What is certain, however, is that nature has healed itself from acute radiation effects. The zone itself has become a unique sanctuary for biodiversity. The zone has now been used as uh, an area where endangered species can be released and, and, uh, and start to expand their populations without competition with humans. Uh, Perswalski's horse is one example. The, the, the uh, uh, European bison is another example, and then the stork is an example of a bird species that's natural to this area that has begun to thrive. 